Well, I want to welcome you all to another episode of Storytime with Winnie and Nan. This is Winnie, and Winnie could not be with us today because we're in the store. Yeah. And my name is Nan, so I'm happy to be with you today. And I brought some books that have to do with springtime. Do you know what season it is? What season is it right now? Winter's all over. And now it's spring. And pretty soon we're going to be able to go and play at the park, aren't we? So, yeah. the first book I brought is all about spring. And the title is, Wake Up, It's Spring. And the author is Lisa Campbell Ernst. And this is all about animals who wake up in the spring. The winter was long and cold. And this winter was long and cold. It seemed like it. Then, early one morning, the sun rose and warmed the earth. Wake up, old friend. It's spring, whispered the sun. Here's the sun. And the warmed earth woke up. The earth basked in the sun's glow, then nudged its guest, the earthworm. Time to wake up. Spring is here. Look at the worm. There were worms on the ground yesterday after all that rain. Did you see the worms on the ground? Yeah, there were lots of worms on the ground. And the earthworm woke up. The worm wiggled in the warm earth and sang to its neighbor the seed. Spring is here. Rise and shine. And the seed woke up. The seed sprouted and grew out of the earth. It called to the sleeping ladybug. Wake up, spread your wings, it's springtime. And the ladybug woke up. The ladybug laughed in the sunshine. It tickled the rabbit's ear and it whispered, Psst, rabbit, spring is here. And the rabbit woke up. He opened one eye. The rabbit twitched its nose to smell the springtime air. He thumped to the bird up to her nest. Out of bed, sleepyhead, it's spring. And these are those red birds that you see. Those are called cardinals. And we see them. There's a lot of them at my bird feeder right now. The bird soared from above and flew past the sleeping cat. Wake up, furry friend, the bird chirped. Spring is here. And the cat woke up. Does anybody have a kitty cat at home? Me. You do? Did he wake up because it's spring? Yeah. yeah. I have a kitty cat. You have a kitty. The cat stretched her legs and rubbed past the sleeping dog. Time to get up, she yawned. It's spring. And the dog woke up. Look at him lying on his back. How cute. He's going to wiggle his paws. The dog frisked past and jumped and barked into the baby's room. Uh-oh. Wake up. Wake up, cheered the dog. He's waking up the baby. And the baby woke up. Who's next? The baby stood up in her crib and laughed and shouted to her brothers and sisters. Out, out. It's springtime. And the brother and the sister woke up. I think they want to go out and play, don't you? Because they want to go outside and play. They picked up the baby and ran to their parents' room and jumped on the bed. And they shouted, wake up, open your eyes, spring is here. And the parents woke up one eye at a time. And they all ran to dance together outside. The parents, the brother, the sister, the baby, the dog, the cat, the bird, the rabbit, the ladybug, the seed, the worm, and all the earth. So they all woke up because it's springtime. Some animals sleep in the wintertime, don't they? And then they wake up in the springtime. All right. The next one I brought, you probably know. Why don't you scooch over here just a little bit, honey, so you can see the pictures. Move over this way a little bit. That's a girl, because I feel like you can't see. Can you see better? You know this book? How many know this book? This is one of my favorite books. 
the hungry caterpillar. <laughs> when you wake up, are you hungry? Yeah. Well, this caterpillar was very hungry. And the author of this book is a very famous author. His name is Eric Carle. And I brought you a special surprise. After we read this book, I'll show you what I brought you. So this is the very hungry caterpillar. And the pictures in this book are just beautiful. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. Can we see it? See the little egg laying on the leaf? All right. Look, the pictures are beautiful. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop, out of the egg came a tiny, little, very hungry caterpillar. Yeah. That's good. He started to look for some food. On Monday, you have to help me remember the days of the week. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. The next day is Tuesday. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. What comes after Tuesday? Today. We almost. First comes Wednesday. He ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. Now it's what day? After Wednesday comes Thursday. Yeah, on Thursday he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. My goodness gracious. What comes after Thursday? Friday. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. His tummy must be full by now. On Saturday, he ate through, look at all the stuff he ate through. He ate through chocolate cake. What's this? Ice cream cone. Do you know what this is? A pickle. Some cheese. Do you know what this is? This is a piece of pepperoni. Does anybody eat pepperoni? No? This is a what? Lollipop. What's this? Pizza. It looks like pizza. I think it's cherry pie, but it does look like pizza. What's this? It looks like a hot dog. What's this? A cupcake or a muffin. It could be a muffin. And what's this? Watermelon. Oh, I have a tummy ache just thinking about that. And that night, he had a stomach ache too. Yeah. The next day was Sunday again, because after Saturday comes Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through just one nice green leaf, and his tummy felt much better. Because that's what caterpillars are supposed to eat, right? They're not supposed to eat pizza. Right? They're not supposed to eat pizza. Now he wasn't hungry anymore. And he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He's a daddy caterpillar. He looks like a daddy caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. And he stayed inside for two weeks. He's too big. He's very big. Then he nibbled a bite in the cocoon and pushed his way out. What's he going to be when he comes out? A butterfly. Let's see if you're right. <gasps> he was a beautiful butterfly. You were right. Wow, that was good. That was a good story. That was a big one. It was a big story. Yeah, it was, and he's a big butterfly. And what I brought you, so make sure you all take one of these home. I made a very hungry caterpillar. Look at what I made. How'd I do? Does it look like a very hungry caterpillar? Let me fix his antennas. There he is. Is that cute? So when you go home, I made my own very hungry caterpillar. And when you go home, you each can take home a little baggie. And to say thank you for coming to my story time. And you can take this home and inside the baggie is everything you need to make a very hungry caterpillar. How's that? Is that a good deal? Yeah, so you can take those home when you leave, okay? We'll leave these right here. So don't let me forget to give you your, your surprise to take home. Does anybody know this book? This is one of my favorite books. Does anybody have a garden in your yard? Do you plant vegetables? 
tomatoes, lettuce, anything like that? Well, Nan has a garden. And do you know what happens sometimes to my garden? What do you think gets in my garden? Bunnies. Bunnies. And you know what the bunnies do in my garden? What do you think they do? <laughs> they eat my vegetables. Well, this is a story about Mr. Greeley. That's his name. And he plants a garden. And bunnies do the same thing they do to my garden. So let's see what he does about that. And maybe I can learn how to take care of my garden. So the name of this book is Muncha 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 by Candace Fleming. For years, Mr. Greeley dreamed of planting a garden. He dreamed of getting his hands dirty and growing yummy vegetables and for gobbling them all up. But he never tried it until this spring, said Mr. Greeley. This spring, by golly, I'm going to plant a garden. So he hoed and he sowed and he watched his garden grow. Lettuce, carrots, peas, and tomatoes. Hmm, that's what I plant. Yum, 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 said Mr. Greeley. Soon I'll fill my tummy with fresh vegetables. Let's see what happens. Now you have to see who's watching him. Can you see the picture? Who's watching Mr. Greeley plant? Can you see who that is? Bunnies. Keep your eye on the, uh-oh. But one night when the sun, you have to help me now, the sun is going to go down. The sun goes down. When the sun goes down, what comes up? The moon. And the moon goes up. That a boy. Thank you for helping me. Three hungry bunnies appeared. It's Tippy, Tippy, and Tippy. And what do they do? Munch, munch, munch. They ate the lettuce. The next morning, when Mr. Greeley saw his gnawed sprouts, he was angry. So he built a wire fence around his garden. He said, no bunny's going to get in my garden now. Do you think that's going to keep them out? What do we predict? You think it's going to keep them out? We would, they would need to do a big one. You think he needs a bigger fence? Yeah. Well, let's see what happens. So, help me. The sun went down and the moon came up. And let's see what happens. Here they come. Tippy, 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 pat. Spring hurdle, dash, dash, dash. What did they jump over? The fence. They jumped over the fence. And what are they doing? Munch, munch, munch. <laughs> about that. The next morning, when Mr. Greeley saw his nibbled leaves and gnawed sprouts, he was really angry. So, he built a tall wooden wall behind the wire fence all around his vegetable garden. Humph, he said. Those floppy ears will never get over that wall. Do you think the wall's going to keep them in, out? What do you think? You think they're going to jump over that fence too? Well, here we go. Help me. The sun went down. And what comes up? The moon came up. And here's tippy, 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 pat. Dig. Scramble. Scratch, scratch, scratch. What did they do? They went, they went under the wall. Oh, my goodness. Spring hurdle, dash, dash, dash. Munch, munch, munch. They ate some more vegetables. The next morning, when Mr. Greeley saw his chewed stems, his nibble leaves, and his gnawed sprouts, look at how angry he is. He was really angry. So he made a deep trench. A trench is a hole. And he filled it with water. And he said, hmm, huff, huff. They can't get under that now, and they can't get over the trench to get into my garden. Do you think that's going to keep them out? Can a bunny swim? Do you think bunnies can swim? I don't know if bunnies... They can. You think they can? We're going to find out. The Help me. The sun went down and the moon came up. Tippy, 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 pat. Dive, paddle, splash, splash, splash. Can they swim? 
I think they swam or they jumped or something over the water. Because what did they do? Munch, munch, munch. They ate some more vegetables. The next morning, when Mr. Greeley saw his chomped blossoms, chewed stems, nibbled leaves, and gnawed sprouts, he was furious. <gasps> he was so mad. So, he blocked and built a huge, huge wall, and he put a fence over the top, and look, he put, he put cameras so he can see what's happening. Do you think that's going to keep them out? He said, they'll they never get they into my garden. They're going to break them. You think what's going to happen now? And he even put a lock on it. So the sun went down and the moon came up. Tippy, 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 stop. They couldn't get over that. So did he finally keep them out? The three hungry bunnies looked and smelled and touched the huge, enormous thing and they just hopped away. They couldn't get over the fence. You think they're hungry? Look at how sad they look. They look so sad. So the next morning, Mr. Greeley comes out and his vegetables were untouched. Is he angry? He's happy now. Look at him smiling. He's happy. Now he's happy. All right, but now we have to look very closely at the pictures because the first time I read this book, I didn't notice the rabbits. Look at the rabbits over here. And he's got his basket here. So, Mr. Greeley is saying, whoopee, whoopee, I beat the bunnies. So he climbed over the fence, jumped across the water, and squeezed between the fence, and he brought his basket with him. Can you look at that basket and tell me what's in the basket? Carrots. You think it's bunnies. carrots? What's in, the, what's in the basket? Can you see what's in the basket? Bunnies. There's bunnies in the basket. So what's going to happen when he goes over the wall with his basket? What do you think the bunnies are going to do? They're going to jump out and see. They're going to jump out of the basket. There he is. He's got his vegetables. He's going to pick all the vegetables and put them in the basket. And who's in the basket? The bunnies. So he reaches in. And what are they doing to all his vegetables? Munch, munch, munch. They ended up eating all his vegetables inside the basket. How about that? He helped them eat his vegetables. That's pretty good. All right. Good. All right. Now, the next book. Has anybody been to a farm? No. You've never been to a farm? Have you been to a smaller farm or one of those farms? You would like to and go to and pet people and pet the animals at a farm. Sometimes when you go to a farm, have you been to a farm, honey? Have you been to a farm? What farm did you go to? Do you remember? Yeah, and you see all the live animals? Have you been to a farm too? Good for you. Well, this book is all about farm animals. And I thought you could help me with this book because I think you all know the sounds that animals make. What's that, honey? I don't know what this book is, but we'll just put that there. All right, welcome to the farm. All kinds of animals live on the farm. Some live outside and some live in the barn. Furry ones, feathered ones, woolly ones too. Some things that they do just might surprise you. All right, roosters. The first animal we're gonna hear about is a rooster. Roosters crow all day long. They say, what does a rooster say, everybody? What does a rooster say? Here you go, everybody. Cock-a-doodle-doo. When it's early in the morning, will you cock-a-doodle-doo too? And we did. We did. This is a what animal? Pig. Pigs can't sweat. You know how we sweat when we get hot? They can't sweat or jump in a pool. So they roll in the mud. That's how they stay cool. What sound does a pig make? Who can help me? Oink, 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 oink. That's right. That's what a pig says. Oink, oink. That's right. The next one is a billy goat. Billy goat, silly goat, chews everything just because he's curious. But when he nibbles at your clothes, he might make you furious. What does a goat say? Does anybody know? Ma. 
just kind of sounds like a sheep. Yeah, they make almost the same sound as a sheep. Yeah, yeah. Turkeys. What does a turkey say? What does a turkey say? Does anybody know? Gobble, 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 gobble. Can you do that? Gobble, 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 gobble. There you go. You're the kitty, that's right. Turkeys can be very friendly. Sometimes they like to sit on your lap. Has anybody here had a turkey sit on their lap? I never have. They even purr when they're content, just like a kitty cat. Yeah, just like a kitty cat. Cats work hard on the farm, chasing mice from the barn. They also spend much time at rest. Sometimes on a lamb's back is best. What does a kitty say? Meow, meow, meow. Meow, meow. That's right. That's right. Oh, what's that? What's this? A cow. A cow. Have you ever taken a bath with a cow? No. I haven't. <laughs> Cows drink a bathtub full of water to produce their milk every day. But suppose you tried to take a bath and the cow got in your way. Let's all moo like a cow. Ooh, there you go. Yeah, we have chickens. These are chickens. Chickens take dust baths and wear a comb in their head, on their head. Chickens come in many colors, but their combs are always red. What does a chicken say? Chick, 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 chick. Can you do that? Chick, chick, chick. Sheep are very gentle creatures. Yes, and they get nervous when they're left alone. But when they find their flock, they feel happy and at home. Can we ba like a sheep? Ba. That's right. Good for you. Nay. Yeah. Horses eat hay, and horses say nay. They sleep standing up. Could you sleep that way? Do you sleep standing up? How do you sleep? Um, I actually sleep in my bed, but I just um. Yeah. Sleeping. Do you lay down? Yeah, I do. Do you I lay also, down? I also had a dream about that. But I, I, I was sleeping, and, and then someone just put play on too. Oh, you had a dream about Play-Doh. I love Play-Doh. I do too. Lots of baby yeah, animals. Play-Doh eggs. Play eggs are fun. <coughs> Lots of baby animals live on the farm too. And guess what? They would all love to have a visit from you. And the spring is a nice time to go to a farm because you see baby animals, which is really fun. You can see the animals when they're babies. All right, let's see. Okay, I think we have time for one more. How many people here, how many of you guys have helped a friend? Have you ever helped a friend? I, I have Jill in my, my class. Yeah, have you ever helped her with something? Maybe she needed an eraser or something. Have you ever helped a friend? Have you ever helped a friend? Um, I helped no? her with her. I bet you have. You, you helped her with her what? Put something back in her bag? Yeah, in her dance bag? Good. Well, I think it's nice when friends help friends. And this is a story about a butterfly and an elephant and how they help each other. Do you think a butterfly can help an elephant? We're going to see what happens. This is Elmer. And isn't he pretty? Isn't he a pretty elephant? Yeah, he's very pretty. That's Elmer the elephant and the story of his friend, the butterfly. Elmer, the patchwork elephant, was out walking when a shout came from up in a tree. Hello, Elmer. Is that you, monkey? Elmer called back. No, it's me, laughed Cousin Wilbur from behind a bush. That's his cousin Wilbur. Hello, Wilbur, chuckled Elmer. You are clever with your voice tricks. I'm going for a walk. See you later. Let's see who he meets on his walk. Not long after that, another voice called, Help! Help! Elmer smiled and said, All right, Wilbur, come on out. He thought it was his cousin playing a trick again. The voice called again, No, help! I'm trapped! Elmer laughed. Is that you, Wilbur? But before he could finish, he saw that it was Butterfly trapped in a hole from a fallen branch. This Butterfly, you can barely see her. Can you see Butterfly? Yeah, just a little red dot is all you can see. That's all you can see. There's Butterfly trapped under the branch. So let's see what happens. Poor Butterfly, said Elmer, and he lifted the branch to release her. Oh, thank you, Elmer. The branch fell while I was in the hole, said Butterfly. 
Perhaps one day I will be able to repay you and help you. Don't even think about it, Butterfly, said Elmer. If you need help, just call my name, said Butterfly. Whenever, wherever I am, I shall hear you. A butterfly saving an elephant. That's a good one, chuckled Elmer as he continued his walk. At that point, a narrow path led off the main path. I've never been here before, he said. This looks interesting. Uh-oh, I think he's going to get into trouble, don't you? I think Elmer's going to get into trouble. The path suddenly led out of the trees and along a cliff high above the valley below. This is dangerous, thought Elmer, and the path goes to a cave. I'll turn around and go back. Oh, dear. Going backwards here is not easy. I'll go to the cave, turn around there, and walk back straight ahead. Do you think he's going to get stuck? Yeah, this doesn't look good for Elmer, does it, huh? It's not looking good. Uh-oh. Elmer was nearly there when the path started falling. He rushed into the cave and peeked out. Part of the path was gone, so he couldn't go back. Oh, no, there's no way back, he said. Help! Help, he shouted, but there was no answer. No one could hear him. Help, he called again. Still no answer. They're all too far away, he thought. Oh, I'll try Butterfly. Butterfly, Butterfly, help me, help me, he called. He was about to try again when Butterfly arrived. Oh, Butterfly, thank goodness, said Elmer. Now it's me who is trapped in a hole. Don't worry, Elmer, said Butterfly. I'll get help. And she can go fast, right? Because she can fly. Who does she go get? She goes to get his cousin Wilbur. Wilbur was amusing a group of elephants when Butterfly arrived. She quickly told them about Elmer. In no time, the elephants were rushing to the rescue. They're going to help their friend. At the cliff top, the elephants saw how dangerous it was, and most of them kept away from the edge. They didn't want to fall in. Wilbur disappeared back into the trees. There he goes. One or two elephants carefully peeked over the edge to try and spot Elmer. I see his trunk, one said. There's his trunk. See it? Way down the bottom there. I love these pictures. Wilbur soon came hurrying back pulling a very long vine. What do you think they're going to do? How are they going to get him out? What do you think they're going to do? What, honey? They're going to tie it on him, you think? Let's see what happens. Tie this vine around you. You're right, and hold on tight, said Butterfly. Don't worry, it'll be all right. She made a little rhyme. Let's see what happens. There they go. Look at they made a train. And they're pulling him up. Elber, Elmer tied the vine firmly and called out, I'm ready. The elephants grabbed the vine and pulled and pulled and pulled. Elmer swung out from the cave and upwards. Once he was safe, Elmer thanked them all, especially Butterfly. Fancy that, a butterfly saving an elephant, he said. Then a shout came from the cave. Don't forget me! The elephant stared. Who else is there? said one. Just Wilbur's voice. He was playing tricks, laughed Elmer. Let's all tickle him! But Wilbur was already running home. <laughs> Did you like that story? That was good. That was a... Yay! All right. Well, that was fun. I'm so glad you guys all came. Can we all say thank you to Liz thank for letting you. us be here? Say thank you, Liz, thank you, for letting Liz. us come. No. Yeah, that was fun. I hope you all enjoyed story time oh, with Winnie and Nan. That's a bunny. Yeah, that's a bunny. And before you leave, make sure you can all take one of your little crafts to take home with you. Okay, so before you leave, you come and get one. Okay, that's mine. Yeah, that's the one I made. This is for you. Huh, they're all the same. Here you go. Here you go. Okay, do you want one too, honey? Here you go. You got one? Good. Okay. Here you go, sweetheart. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. There you go.
There you go. Here you go, honey. Thank you. You got one? There you go. There you go. This one's for you, sweetheart. All right. You're welcome. You're welcome.